What's up, everybody? This is Lisa Lozano with Global Fight Talk, and I have none other than Hector Camacho Jr. Now, macho everybody knows, time. yes, it's macho time. So everyone knows his father, three-time world boxing champion, Hector Camacho, who now, you know, here we are with his son, Hector Camacho Jr. Hector, thank you so much for taking the time out to- to do this interview, and I am excited. Thank you. No, it's my pleasure. Main time to share my story for boxing people, boxing fans. My pleasure. With, without the public, without the fans, us fans wouldn't be nobody. Right. So it's always, exactly. always good to take out time and talk, you know, do the updates. Well, you just got through telling me that you were at the gym working out. So are we training for a fight? What's going on? Are you going to let us know? You know, I'm back at the gym, you know. I'm actually in for my, I'm training my, my, my cousin. My cousin's an amateur fighter. He's boxing in the, in the U.S. championships, which is a big amateur tournament. So I came down to share my wisdom with him. But I'm actually back in the gym. You know, of course, the documentary came out on Showtime. So the documentary came out. I've been getting a lot of phone calls lately about fighting, about this, about that. So to get myself in shape, you know, I'm not, I'm not fighting no more. So I got to stay young. Right, definitely. Well, I did see, um, you know, after doing some research, I did see a video that you were talking about going, you know, trying to get back in the ring, you know, for 2020. And you guys were going to fight for the LBF, which is Legends Boxing Federation. Now, obviously, that fight never happened. What happened with that? You know, uh, of course, the COVID came and shut down everything, you know. So, um, but then again, in boxing, this is common for us fighters, you know. In boxing, it happens. You get a fight lined up and fights get canceled. It happens every time. Now, that all depends on, you know, who you're working with now. You know, boxing is no longer a sport. It's a business. No, so I... The same thing we used to have back in the days, you know? No, I, I, I agree. So, you know, with everyone going back into fighting, like Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, they just had their fight um, back in December. And, you know, these guys are in their 50s. And, you know, you're still young. You know, I still consider you young. You're 42, 43. Um, hey, not that old, not that old, but go ahead. I accept, <laughs> I accept the young part, go ahead. Yeah, no, you're, in your, you're still young to me. And, um, and there are still fighters at that age that are still fighting. You haven't fought in a while. Is, is this something that when you look at Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones and you saw these guys in their 50s, um, still um, putting it out there. What do you think about yourself going back out there at your age and still wanting to fight? You know, that's something that we we fighters, once a fighter, always a fighter. No matter what age you are, us fighters always want to fight. We always could think that we go back in the ring and fight. We always think that. Um, I, get proud of, I, I get props and kudos to, you know, Roy Jones getting in shape. Mike Tyson, a tremendous job at getting in shape, promoting. It was, it was a success. It's good for boxing. But I also remind us the state that boxing is in right now. So now boxing is like, you know, it's like a show now. It's open for everybody. So in, in one way, I see it an opportunity. The other way, I see it, like, you know what? The end to, you know, the end to the old-time boxing. The end to the old-time boxing like it used to be back in the days. It's a different world now. But um, would I get back in the ring? Hell yeah. If it's a fight that's worth fighting for, hell yeah, I'm in there. Like a Chavez Jr., like a Chavez Sr. I've been calling out Chavez for the longest time. Chavez Sr. I called out Chavez Jr. I called out all my Chavez. Yo, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That would be an awesome fight. You got two legendary fighters, you know, and their sons that are fighting. You got Hector Camacho Jr. versus, you know, Chavez Jr. That would be a dope fight. And that would and be I'm dope. I've been after that fight for the longest time. I want revenge for myself, for my father, for Puerto Rico. That's what I've been for the longest time. We were close to the Chavez Jr. fight. It never panned out. And then I spoke to Omar Chavez, and we signed the contract. He went on a bench. He got lost. The fight was never done. He got canceled. So I actually called Chavez Sr. because he's still in shape. At yeah. Chavez Sr., would you dare do exhibition? And he laughed. He said, you know what? I'll get back to you. At this point, I'll fight any Chavez. If there's an awkward Chavez, a Jackie Chavez, or a Susan <laughs> Chavez, I'll fight any Chavez for revenge, man. <laughs> oh, but you know what? That If that fight ever do happens with, you know, Chavez Jr. versus Camacho Jr., I think that fight would be dope. So I would definitely, I think a lot of people will watch that. I mean, mm -hmm. that is something that would, like one of, you know, somebody just put on Facebook, 
be a banger fight. That that would be a banger fight. Now, let me ask you this, because you got Puerto Rico versus Mexico. You know, that that's huge because in, 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 in the Latino community, it's huge in boxing, right? You know, Latinos love boxing. So you got Puerto Rico versus Mexico. Why is that such a huge thing when a Puerto Rican fighter and a Mexican fighter come together? It is like fireworks. It's always been like that for the, for the beginning days. That's just how we are, man. You know, Mexico always had great warriors, great fighters, Puerto Rico as well. Always been a rivalry, man. You know, the other Latino countries that had their fight, like Argentina, and, you know, and Peru, and from other countries, Colombia, but it's always been Puerto Rico, Mexico. Always been that rivalry. It always it equals up to great fights. I mean, I don't know why. We both hot-blooded. It's just a rivalry. You gotta love it. Well, you know, Mexican fighters are known for their macho being in in the pocket. You know, they, they're known for being brawlers and Puerto Ricos are known to u- utilize the ring, you know, their boxing skills. You know, back in the days when you had, you know, Chavez, you know, people like that, you could, you could really say they were Mexican fighters. But if you look at the fighters today, the fighters today, they are, they are very different from the from the Mexican fighters back then. Like Canelo, you know, Canelo, he utilizes that ring. You got, you know, the up and coming like Ryan Garcia who just fought last night. He's another up and comer and he's a boxer too. What do you think that 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 change, you know, the style from being in the pocket, being very macho and, and brawling versus now we're just boxing? Hey Lisa, your IQ is pretty good. Your IQ is uh, pretty good. Thank you. Know, Truth to that, you know. Nowadays, these Mexican fighters are, are, are boxers now. They're utilizing the ring a lot more. Um, they're more tactical than what before. They're evolving as fighters. Um, some blame it on the meat in Mexico, <laughs> 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 but they're evolving as fighters, you know. So yeah, I, I think kudos to them. In Puerto Rico, likewise, but I think that old school training method, the old school teaching, is not is no longer there no more, you know. That happens all the country, you know, the, the great trainers pass on to, you know, and the young guys take it and they change up. But, you know, um, that's just how it is. Bobby Mexican fights like Puerto Rican, you know, we, we warriors. You know, one thing that I've noticed um, about boxing when it comes to our people, our gente, like we go, we love to go for our Mexican boxers as well as box, you know, as well as Puerto Ricans, you know. But here in America, I've noticed like when you have an American fighter like Mayweather, he, he wasn't too, um, he wasn't very well liked, but he was a, he was an Olympic, you know, Olympic medalist, um, you know, born and raised here in America. But then you had a lot of people that hated him, that, that didn't like him because of, you know, his, his arrogance in the ring and how he talked. Um, but a lot of Americans do not go for their very own people. Um, have you noticed that? We love under, you know, underdog stories. That's what we love in America. We love the old gladiators, the fighters, the gaddies. Devil for the gaddies. But when it comes down to, you know, to the American fighters, I don't want to get into the racial part of it. But that's just how the business is. And Floyd, when it comes down to Floyd Mayweather, that was a marketing plan. You know, that he needed to do. I don't know if you recall, but for the Chino Gaddy fight, Floyd wasn't putting butts in the seats. The most you put in was like 1,000, 500, 9, or 2,000. And he was finding quality fighters. So I guess that's part of the marketing plan, you know, to make this up be hated. He, you know, he put around the money team behind him. He thought of making money. And whatever he did, it worked for him. But, you know, Floyd always needed a dance partner. And most of those dance partners was Latino fighters he used. You're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I, I, think, I think Pretty Boy Floyd... Um, before he became Money Mayweather, Pretty Boy Floyd was knocking out folks. I mean, the percentage yeah. of but the percentage of his knockouts came when he was Pretty Boy Floyd, and I think Pretty Boy Floyd understood the marketing part of of boxing and how to utilize that. So he went from Pretty Boy Floyd to Money Mayweather. So Money Mayweather now is all about making money and and knowing that he's going to be the villain in the boxing world, and the, and being a villain is what makes money. I'm okay with that. He deserves to go. He's that. He did put that work in. He put that work in. Even on the loose, he put that work in. See, I mean, he could deserve to do what he's doing. I mean, do I applaud that? I applaud the body of work he put into it. But he fucked up the boxing game. The boxing game is messed up now. Everybody do what they want to do now. 
All right, guys, we are back. I'm not too sure what happened, but hey, it's nothing other than macho time, but it's all good. We're backing up and running. Sorry for that late, that, that delay that, you know, just crash. It happens when it comes in your Facebook Live. Am I right? It's like that. It's still macho time. It's still macho time. Well, you know, before we, you know, got off the phone, we were talking about, you know, Mayweather, but enough of those, you know, those boxers. I really want to talk about you and your father. I know that right now you have, your father has a documentary on Showtime, um, the Hector Camacho documentary. Let's talk about that. You know, a lot of people, you know, are huge fans of your father. It's, it's a love and hate relationship with your dad. Um, how did that story come along? Because there's so many documentaries about your dad right now. And then Showtime picked it up and said, hey, we want to do a story yeah, about your dad. Showtime, you know, well, we did, the, we did the deal with Showtime. Well, we didn't do the show first deal with Showtime. We did do it direct after draft. He had a vision. Um, we were doing it one way, but I guess it went, came out another way. But overall, I think it was a great documentary. Um, it put Macho's name back in the map. It gave people insight who Macho was and what we've been through. Um, it was a good doc. But, you know, we just wish we had more hands-on of it. We didn't have that much hands-on. But overall, it put Macho's name back in the light, so I'm happy. You know, your, your dad, you know, one of the things in the documentary, they kept saying that your dad had a lot of demons. Um, he fought, you know, a lot of demons that he had throughout his life, you know, at, even as a childhood, and the unfortunate way of how he, you know, passed away. Did that bring any memories to you growing up with your father and seeing him in these situations, um, you know, the lifestyle that he was living, you know, some say it was, you know, fast, um, crazy lifestyle of your father. You know, you know, um, like on and off, everybody got their own demon. We all fight, you know, our own demon. If you're a female, you got your own demon with the weight issues. I got to afraid. That's your demon, your hair, your, you know, insecurities. Everybody had their own demons. Um, But he did come out the fast life, you know. He came out from a single-parent household where the mother was the, the father as well, you know. That happens in most Latino families, households, you know. So he came out rough in the streets. He came from Spanish Harlem. So that's what he, that's what he learned. That's who he was. He was rough. Um, Hey, but... The best thing about it, he made it from the hood to the White House. I mean, how many of us could do it, you know? But well, he accomplishes huge. What was your fondos, fondest memory of your dad? I mean, I know growing up, you know, with your father being a boxer, I know you had to be in the gym with him all the time. What yeah. made you what, what made you think like, okay, now I want to fight? Is it because you saw your dad? It was just in you. I was something I always seen. I was I grew up being picked on. I was bullied when I was young. I was Camacho Jr. So everywhere I went, I was being bullied. Um, it's something grew up in me. You know, I was a baseball player. I played basketball. I played all sports. Coming from New York City, but boxing was something my mother put put on me. It wasn't my father. My mother said, "You know what, Hector? So we're in Florida. We got New York. I want to put you in boxing. You're not gonna be hanging out in the streets. We're gonna get you in something." So that was my mother pushing me. It wasn't my father. My father didn't always box until I reached the, the Olympic trials. I was number one in America at 139. That's where he found out I was boxing. Okay. You know, I know that you've seen, you've gone to your father's uh, fights, and he was known for his flashiness as his ring entrance. Um, I know that you said that was all natural. None of that was made up. He didn't have to force that. Um, what did you... You know, it's like you took on that as well. You came out, you know, being flashy as your dad. Is that something that you wanted to do to for people to remember who your dad was? That's something I wanted to do because I understood my marketing, man, and boxing. If anything, what I love my father was marketing was everything. Marketing, how you market yourself, how you how you, how you maintain relevance. So that doesn't, you know, a pay a different book, you know. They ain't market but in boxing. At the end of the day, it's not about how many butts you put in the seat. At the end of the day, you'd be a terrific fighter. But if you don't put butts in the seats, your value is nothing. No, I, I, I get it. What did you take away from your father? Because your father's a Southpaw fighter, and you're also a Southpaw fighter. Did that just happen, or did you decide, I want to be like my dad and fight like a Southpaw as well? I just didn't know any better. That was just the right way to fight. After watching the training camp, mimicking his move, 
That's just how, that's how I knew how to do it. Just turn stop point fight. That was natural. Even though we both are right handed, my father's right handed, and I'm right handed. Right. Okay. Well, you know, um, let's talk about your career. You know, you are 59 and seven. You're one. Yeah. You're, you're you're one fight short away of being 60. 60 fights. Do you still want to make that one more fight to be? I uh, want to say I have 60 fights. Do you still want to get there? It always crosses my mind. It always crosses my mind. Can that many people say I got 60 wins? And maybe we'll say that. For me, it's a milestone. So hell yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, it's, for, me, for me, it's about business now, you know? At my age, I'm not going there find the young boys. Now that should make sense. I'm looking for a fight to maybe define my career, maybe. Like a Chavez Jr. Or you are know, some kind of fight to maybe define my career. But as far as um, going and just do it, I don't have no plan to doing that. I'm trying to stay busy outside the ring. You so said I mean, business outside of is, is take advantage of my name, Camacho. It's about taking advantage. That's something us fighters fall short of doing. About 90, 95% of fighters retire broke. Right. You know, I, I was talking to you earlier before um, we, we went live, and you're saying that you were in the South. You're in Tyler, Texas. We're not in the South, East Coast. You're in um, East, um, East Texas. What are you doing in East Texas, of all places? <laughs> I ask myself every here and there, but the peace that I get when I'm in East Texas is, is amazing. That's like my getaway place. You know, I want to get away from everything in life and, you know, recoup and dream and get my plans together. That's where I go to. I have a fan right now that's, that, that's watching you. His name is um, Damon. Um, I don't know, Dick uh, Castrata, Castrata. I'm not sure if I'm saying his last name right, but he's a big fan of yours. And first of all, he's asking you, how are you doing champ? And he said that he fought on one of your cards back in 1997 in Mississippi. Do you remember that? Mm. Yeah, is it, is it a casino magic or something? Yeah, yeah. early in my career, I fought towards the area. Wow, you make me sound like I'm old, 97. Wow, we're in 2021. Um, <laughs> Oh, damn, do I remember? Hey, <laughs> you know what? Um, everything's well, brother. Everything's well. Just you know, keep pushing forward. Once you fight, you're always a fighter. And you know, we fight every day in life, you know? Life is a fight, so just, just push it forward. That's good. You said that, um, you know, with this doc, like, we're going back to the documentary that's on Showtime right now as we are speaking. It, it's, on, it's on there if you guys want to go back there and, and watch it. If there was anything that you wanted to add about your father that Showtime missed, what would have it been that you oh, wanted to add? Things. A lot of things, a lot of things. But they, they, they covered a lot in 90 minutes. Let, 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 let me be honest, in 90 minutes, it, they did cover a lot. You know, they covered inside the ring, outside the ring, and towards the death. But, you know, the only thing that wasn't mentioned in it, like, you know, he had a brother who was also the world champion. Not yeah. a lot of people know that. Oh, wow. He also, you know, the story about where he come from, Puerto Rico, why he survived, and why the things didn't achieve. There's a lot of things that missed out the documentary, but hey, I think they did a great job. Um, got a high range, and hey, it opened doors for me to other things that could put out more truth. One of the things, um, before we move on to the next question, um, he was telling me that you fought a guy named Wayne Broderick. Yeah, yeah. obviously he's a huge fan of yours because he remember all these and he and he fought on your card as well. He was a, a former pro boxer as well. And so he definitely no, does remember you. Great yeah. That was definitely. my come up in boxing. He doing those times. My goal was to become world champion. My goal is to be known for myself, Hector Camacho Jr. Not just the son of Hector Camacho Jr. Or, or not just the brother of Camacho. I made a point to be known for myself, which is what? hard. That's big shoes to fill. Yeah, it's very hard um, because you have a lot of these, these sons that are, are going behind their father. What do you think that you did differently to set yourself aside from people to say, oh, you're the son of a legend. You're Hector Camacho's son. Um, what do you think that that you you've done differently, or what do you think you could have done differently if you wanted to set yourself uh, aside from your dad? Instead of me saying that it was a shadow, I used it as a light to guide me, to open my doors, and to do good by it. And I've done a lot of work. I was giving back. I do a lot of community work, and that's something you know. Keep my father's name alive. Right, right. 
So what do you think about these up and coming uh, um, fighters? I know we were talking about earlier, we were talking about the Mexican fighters versus Puerto Rican fighters. There's a lot of great fighters out here right now. And you said earlier that you think that boxing has lost it. It lost due to, you know, mixed martial arts, MMA. Um, why do you think that boxing has lost its its tenacity, its edge that you're saying that it lost towards MMA? It lost its credibility. A lot of fights that they had to make those turns, the decisions are draw, somebody got robbed. It's not the same thing, you know, and um post MMA, they fight the they fighters. It's ready to get a bad decision and boxing bad decisions and mismatches. But boxing, there's still a shitload of talent and fighters. There's a shitload of talent. It's the, the, you know, the, the Telefimo, the Tank, the Ryan Garcia. I mean, we, we had a, a crop of good young fighters that could hold boxing apart. It was all about marketing. You know, one thing about these fighters are that they know how to market themselves, you know? Promoters don't market for them. Promoters promote them companies, not fighters. Um, let's talk about uh, th these ring entrants. Like people, like your dad had one of the best in ring entrants. He was, he was so energetic. But the ring entrants today has gone beyond that we've ever seen before. Like Wilder, you know, when Wilder fought Tyson yeah. Fury, that was a crazy entrance. And, and you know, what I didn't matter, you know, what I didn't matter about Lisa. No of the fighters say. I want to thank Hector Macho Camacho who inspired me. About 90% of fighters fight with the Macho Man type of boxing trunks. Nobody says he's Camacho. Right. The re-entrance, the Macho Man is the one who started originally in the re-entrance. Right. But none of these fighters say, I want to thank Macho Camacho for inspiring That shit bothers me. Yeah. But you know, um, th th there's always someone that starts the trend. And there's yeah. people that that follow it, regardless if they get um, the recognition that they 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 deserve. You know as well. A lot of other people know that your father was one of you know the the part you know the people that started you know this this the ring Puerto entrance. Rican Muhammad Ali. Do what? He was the Puerto Rican Muhammad Ali. He was the Puerto Rican Muhammad Ali. He was. What was probably one of the best fights that you remember of your dad? You know, there's a lot of fights, but the, the two fights that sticks out the most was the Aaron Xavier fight and, and the um, Chavez fight. Why the Xavier fight? A lot of people said it changes the um, it changes style. After the Xavier fight, he got rocked for the first time, became a boxer. But what I liked about it, he took the adversity and he did well. He fought back. I mean, Xavier was a vicious puncher, and then he came back and fought Chavez. A fight that people want to see him lose bad. They were, they were tired of the Macho Man. And he went, <laughs> he took the pounding like a man. And after the pounding, he took the pounding, he went out and party. So that's the that now. Wow, that's the Macho Man in my eyes, you know? Right, right. So those two fights are you know, the ones that sticks out. Then you get the fight like Sugar Ray Leonard, but those fights for me don't really count. You know what I'm saying? Well, well actually, I actually want you to explain for those that don't understand what you're saying, like, you know, like Sugar Ray Leonard, why didn't that fight count? Well, we could go like an exhibition. How about that? That, yeah. that? That's, you know, like an exhibition. The Red, the, the, the Leonard fight, they were past their prime, but there were two great legends going in there. So I look at an exhibition. But we talk about the Macho Man, the Macho Man from the, from the lightweight division, the 130 pound, 140 pounder. He was a bad man in there. What was the best advice that your father could have ever gave you? Not just your, in boxing, not just in boxing, but you know, maybe in boxing, but just in life, period. Get your fat ass up and work. I already did my I already did my job. Do your job. <laughs> do you ever think about that while you're in there? What your another father word, has said? In other words, do not live off my name. Do your own shit. And that's what I understood. Do you think him being hard on you is what what molded you today? He didn't know um, He wasn't hard. My father was a typical father that be around him. See your homework, son. How you doing in school? No, no, no. Remember, my father had me. He was 15 years old. He was a baby himself when he had me. So my right. learning came from watching him, observing him, everything he did. You know, he come from the streets. He wasn't your, your, your regular father. But this guy was brilliant, ahead of his times. I thought he was crazy. Tell you the truth, I thought this guy was crazy. My, my whole family said their father was crazy, but he was a genius. He was ahead of his time. You look back at his documentary, this guy was cutting out his outfits. This guy was creative, man. 
Yeah, that he was, knew. He, he messed that's up what, persona, so I learned a lot watching him. What to do and not to do a side of well, one thing your dad was was ahead of his time. He knew how to market himself at a time when there was no internet, um, you know, social media, um, you know, so everything had to been word of mouth or he had to be on TV for everyone to understand who Hector Camacho was. People don't realize that today. Um, today, in order to be to become popular, you have social media, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have Instagram, you can you can market yourself right now, yes. just, just starting out, you know, in your career. But your father, when there was no social media, he knew how to do that. And, and people tune in because of that. He lived the American dream. He came from Puerto Rico, born in Puerto Rico, came to the state at the age of four years old, made it to the White House. He didn't speak no English. That's the American dream. Right, right. Uh, yeah, it's the, made it to the top. Well, let's talk about your fights. You know, you, you, you're 59 and seven, and I don't want to say you finished at 59 and seven because hopefully you can get that one fight. Well, yeah, obviously you're saying that you bring it up. <laughs> you, we got to get that one more fight, right? I'm hoping to get one more fight. I'm working on something big right now, but I can't, I can't slip it out. I'm working with Green, Le Green Leggy. And eruption boxing management. I mean, when is, you know, she working her butt off, man. It's the first time to actually get a female manager to work with me. And, and she's a get it. She's a, she a go get it. So she's working big things out right now. She's working on deals, getting me out there. I keep myself busy outside the ring because that would relate to, you know, more marketing, you know, just staying myself busy outside the ring, keep my name out there. Um, I'm looking for a big fight. One more good fight to say bye bye to the game. I'm, I'm hoping I get that Hulu City Chavez Jr. fight. If I get that Hulu City Chavez senior exhibition, hey, amen, I'd be happy for that. You know, there's there's talks of Mike Tyson putting up, uh, you know, another fight um, with Holyfield. I don't know if it would be an exhibition or if that would be, um, you know, an actual fight. But I think, you know, if Mike Tyson were to do this fight again, um, I think there should be some actual fighters on there because in this last fight, you know, he had NBA yeah, you know, player on there. He had a YouTube sensation on there, you know. To, so maybe that's something that you guys could probably try to get jump on if they decide to do another Mike Tyson fight versus, you know, whoever's next in line to fight him. Yeah. What do you think about that? You no, know, I mean, it was a good looking, put the fighters back on it. But, you know, boxing, bro, and a boxing open, man. YouTube is a influence, is, is what's making it right now, you know. I mean, this is a young, the old school boxing crowd is then or boxer fans. It was the older guys. Now the youngest, the younger people, they want to see MMA. They don't care too much about that, about fighting no more. But you bring YouTubers on, you bring people like that, they're going to watch it. So I can understand the marketing behind it, you know? I can understand that. But at the same time, it's hurting boxing. What was your, you know, I know that you said earlier that this is the first time you working with a female fighter. And, and not a female, a female manager, and she's doing great. What do you say about the female fighters out there today, like the boxers? You have Clarissa Shields that is out there, you know, that's making a name for a lot of the female fighters who she's getting ready to cross over to MMA. Do you ever watch um, female boxers? Um, <laughs> Probably not. I, I really don't, man. I, I, mean, I, I got a champion at home with female fighters, my wife. She she don't stop fighting. Man. She's the champion in my, in my eyes. But I don't watch female. I don't watch you know. But I know I know they're getting better. Clutch shields. They are improving. And sooner or later, female boxers are gonna make the money that the men you know close to the men. I mean, they're gonna have to. They're improving. They're evolving as fighters. You know, a lot of these female fighters um, that are out there, they're making a name for themselves. I always say that boxing is 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 old school. It's it's you know it's mainly it's it's you know your old school fighters. They don't they do not want to see female fighters out there for whatever reason, especially the female boxers. And there's a lot of great female boxers that are out there. You know, like Katie Taylor, um, Clarissa Shields, and you have a Puerto Rican fighter out there no. that. Her name is Amanda Serrano. Man, she she is one of my favorite female fighters out there. And she's also crossed over to MMA. She's doing MMA and she's undefeated as an MMA fighter. You know, Amanda Serrano. Have you ever met her? She's 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 from she's from yes, your hood. Yes, <laughs> yes, I have. And actually, both of them, both sisters, and all them respect. 
mutual respect for what they I respect what they do. They badasses. Yeah. They put the islands on the map, you know. Um and she respects the legacy. She loved my father. So I mean, they love this style. She Puerto Rican. So I mean it's a blessing. Yeah, I respect anybody that put their guns going to the ring, really. I mean, you know, it's hard work in there, man. It's hard work. Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna name a few fighters and I want you to tell me what you think when I when uh the first thing that comes to mind, okay? Uh, um Emmanuel Augustus. Oh, tough. You know, Emmanuel Augusta gave Floyd one of the toughest fights. And I was Floyd did say to, that. Floyd said give, it, he was one of his toughest yeah, fights. To give Floyd problems, you can't be traditional fighter, two to one, two. Floyd will see those kind of punches. But those loopy fighters always give a good fight a hard time. Madonna gave Floyd a hard time. You know, those kind of fights give people hard time. Then they're, they're not traditional fighters, but man, you got a talented fighter. All right. Prince, Prince Nazim. Amazing. The brother had tremendous power. Awkward. Showman. Yes. Yes. My okay. brother, brother. Salam alaikum. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sugar Ray Leonard. Amazing. Amazing. He, for me, he's the golden boy. You know, we talk about fighters like Sugar Ray. Sugar was a killer. He was a fighter. Oh, he was a killer. Sugar would wear you out and go for the KO. Sugar was a bad boy. He's a boxer. He was everything. He was the American dream. He came out. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, Mike Tyson. Amazing. Amazing. He's right there, man. You know, he'd be, he'd be, he'd be you know, remembered. Mike Tyson came out and macho. Remember that game he had? Mike Tyson punch out? Yeah. I mean, it, was, it was amazing, man. Mike Tyson was the man. He, he was he was an icon his days. I mean, we love Mike Tyson. Last one. Sugar Ray Robinson. I was too young, but you know what? I was too young and I watched little clips of him and of him. Um, tremendous speech, tremendous power. I wish I was around and study more, see more tapes of him, but I mean, I he was a bad boy. Yeah, definitely is. Okay, now I'm gonna bring it to some 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 new school. I, I, I definitely want to talk that boxing shit that you were talking about earlier. Um, you know, um, Lopez versus Lomachenko. I want to talk about that about that fight re really quick. Um, because Lomachenko to me was probably the best boxers that I've seen out there as far as his footwork and how he works his ankles, how he's in and out. And he was so hard to hit. Um, but Lopez, Lopez and his team had a plan for him and it took away, they took away his angles. What do you think about Lopez in that fight? Did you, did you get to watch that fight? You know what? When I got to the house, I watched the fifth, the fifth round on. I see the first couple of rounds. Um, when I did see the rest of the fight from the fifth on, I started seeing the champion, Lomachenko, taking over and um, pushing the young boy back, the young lion back. I mean, it was a chess match. But I seen, the, I seen the, the, the old lion being aggressive towards the end. So if I was to judge the fight from the fifth round to the fourth, it was a win by the first five rounds. Um, I give Lopez a lot of credit, man. He stepped up. He's the best. That it, nobody solved that puzzle. The puzzle was in such too much movement. So whatever they did, neutralize, they got the win. Hey, heads up, man. heads up. You know what I like about, Lo, um, about the Lopez kid? I see no letting up on him. He's on top, now ain't gonna let up. No, I see that boy, you know, hungry, still hungry. And that's important. Yeah, definitely. But that division's hot, the hot division. What do you think about um, Earl Spence? I think his, he's a basic fighter. He's a great basic fighter. A great basic fighter. I mean, he's going to try to fight with the distance with his jab. He's a solid pull, his height. Piece of power, he bangs the body. I like Earl Spence. I think one of the best one of the best out there, hands down. What did, you, what did you think about that fight with him and Garcia? Did you think Garcia, he didn't throw enough punches? And he should have, you know, done something differently. You think his father should have said something differently to him in the fight game when he was in there fighting to switch it up? Because, you know, in a fight, in a fight, you have to adjust. You have to learn to adjust in a fight. When when plan A doesn't work, you got to go to plan B. <laughs> That's when not anybody could adjust that easy. Nobody yeah. could adjust, you know, and um. 
It's tough. It's tough, man. A fighter gotta have high IQ to see the things coming to you. Oh, but you know, you know what I say? Us fighters get wins. Of course, we want us fighting, but it's a team effort. The, you know, the corners win matches. The corners win some rounds as well. And not just the fighter. You get the corner that make to help you win the round. To say what to do. Stick to your plan. Stick to this. I mean, that's boxing. If there was somebody out here right now who's planning on to, you know, a young up and coming kid who wants to fight, what would you tell them? What, what, what was one of the first things like to learn as a fighter? Because a lot of, a lot of fighters don't try to utilize, they don't realize how important the jab is or, 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 or footwork movement. People think if you just punch that that's it, that's your offense and defense, but people don't realize that your footwork is also your offense and defense. If you, if you move away, you're, you're moving away from the punch, obviously, but there's a lot of fighters who just stand in the pocket and then and they get hit. What do you say about that? Because you, you can ruin your career. That's a short career, short-term career. If you want to stand in the, you know, and, and bang, and if you don't move your head, because if you don't move your head, you know what I always used to say, someone's going to move it for you. <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one no you know what what i would basically tell these fighters you know study the boxing game man study the boxing game when it comes to training them definitely the basics where is that i would have worked work on punching punching natural i work on just defense how to move basic the foot the feet movement is everything i mean you got fight that fight straight up and war when they take punches yeah you're right about that your career will end fast and that's you know that's not what we're in it for so I would definitely right. tell them. One thing I would, I would tell these young fighters who are pro, take financial courses, take financial classes. That's what the boxers need. We don't have no, we don't have no 401k plan. We don't have no retirement plan, no insurance. We have to invest in ourselves. Definitely. Maybe that's something, Hector, you should do. You know, as, as someone Man, who, as someone as an experienced working. fighter. Yeah, like someone like, you know, someone like you who who understands the fight game, you understand like how to, be, you know, being on the biggest level for yourself and your father and how the financial game works, because there's a lot of fighters out there that comes from, you know, you know, from the ghetto that they, they come from, you know, low income family. And I'm just, I'm not just saying the ghetto and I'm not just saying that, but there's a they, well, box, no, but boxing, they consider it the they call it the poor man sport. It is. Like, it, it, it is a poor man sport. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, Yes. And then so when these fighters like you saw Mike Tyson, who got all this money, millions of dollars, they don't know they don't know what to do with it. And they wind up going broke. Um, so maybe that's something you should, go, you know, do, you know, do uh, uh, Hector Camacho Financial uh, <laughs> Academy or something. Or maybe a boxing academy. I thought about thousands of times, you know, I asked him, I questioned myself, I said, why are fighters more involved in boxing? I mean, we should be good enough to judge fight and for we fight. We are fighters. We should be judges. We should stay in the boxing world. I'm asking myself, where do these judges come from? Do they take classes? How do you become a judge? How do you got people scoring fights that don't make no sense? So we need uh -huh. to tie up in boxing. We need to put my hands in boxing and really, you know, work for boxing before we lose the sport. I, I do agree with it. I think there's a lot of judges that are out there that are, who are, you know, one, they're one-sided. And two, they've never stepped in the ring and they don't understand what they're seeing. They just understand what they're told and how to score a fight, but don't realize, you know, some of the scoring that they're putting out there, putting these fighters ahead of the fight is really nothing, you know? And, and I think a lot of the times too, you have your casual fans who watch these fights that persuade the judges when, you know, they, they see a fighter hit another fighter and it sounds or it could it could looks can be deceiving and they're like, ooh, and then the judge is like, okay, one one point, you know, or whatever. A lot of the casual fans do, I believe, have a lot of say when it comes to the scoring just as well. You know, I, I would love to see oh um a scoring system like after every round, they announce who won the round. I mean, that's something that'd be cool in boxing. You know, in the Olympics, they, they, they've done that. I know so, some of the, the, the bigger, you know, like as far as like amateur fighters as well, the amateur boxing, like um, I know ringside and I know at Golden Gloves, that they, they announce each winner. They announce who, who was ahead. Um, you know, this is the pro, the, the pro game. And um, you know that, you know, boxing can be very political and um, very one-sided. Okay.
I mean, that is boxing. Boxing is a dirty business. It's a beautiful sport, but it's a dirty business. Yes, it, it, it definitely is. It, it definitely is. But before we, before we leave, um, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, I know we talked about earlier, and, and for some reason we lost your video. Um, I can't see you. But before we leave, I wanted to ask, what is next for Hector Camacho? Um, well, I'm working outside the ring, definitely. Um, I'm working hard. I'm hoping to get something going soon. I hope I get back in the ring. 2021 is, is a big year for me outside the ring. I must have having a granddaughter, so I'm having a grandboy soon. My daughter's pregnant, so I'll become a grandfather. So I'm going to bring my eggs out the game, but I'm really working hard on the legacy. Well, I know that Texas has now allowed fighting back in Texas where there is a live audience. I know some of the other states, they haven't, like California, they don't have live audiences. Um, so it's just, you know, the fighter and the commissioner and the judges, and that's it. Um, I'm hoping to see more boxing in Texas. I mean, you are in Texas. You're in East Texas, by the way. Um, I don't live in Texas, but I visit every time in Texas. I stay in Texas. I think I think Texas is great for boxing. It's a big, it's a big ass state. <laughs> it's yeah. a big box, a lot of fights in Texas. Yeah. Well, you know, I definitely want to campaign for Chavez versus Camacho. I definitely want that fight, you know, to be campaign out there. And maybe you need to be more on social media, like Twitter, you know, um, Facebook is more like family oriented, but if you were yeah. to get on, yeah, if you, if you were, if you were to get on Twitter, really get on Twitter and start tweeting Camacho versus Chavez, you'll get a lot more, you know, feedback than you would on Facebook. To be honest, okay. so, yeah. advice, you know, my main thing right now is getting myself my butt in shape. Before I think about finding anybody, get myself in shape and start out with the eating, get back to where I was at. I stopped boxing, I had a routine going to the gym. I stopped that for years. I jog every day, yeah. I love to jog, but you know, yeah, yeah, it's about well, that's, well, that, that, that'll be that would be definitely motivation if you were to start right now, if you were to get off this interview right now and get on Twitter and I'll start tweeting that, you, that, that, that you want to fight Chavez and let's make it a legendary, any you know, Chavez, fight. The father, the sister, the uncle, any Chavez, anyone. Yeah, I definitely think you should get on Twitter where it's more active and you have a lot more fighters on there that would retweet that. So I, you know, maybe you and your manager, you know, should get on there and start tweeting this fight. And this will push you to get into shape, to start eating healthy and, you know, stay active in the gym so you can start fighting. You know, and that will be your last fight that you say that you will go out with a bang by fighting a Chavez. Yes. I mean, in the meantime, I'm working with my younger cousin called Felix Camacho, my father's nephew. He's an amateur fighter and going to the U.S. Um, championship soon. So we're working. So, you know, at the same time, me training him and passing my wisdom and knowledge to him is motivating me as a leader, as a role model to show him, you know, show him this how it's done. So, yeah, I'm staying in shape. I'm trying to be the leader here and, you know, push it okay. forward. Before we wrap this interview up, Hector, um, I greatly appreciate the time you, you, you take out, you know, that you took out of your day because you were working out earlier, you know, to chat with myself, you know, with Global Fight Talk. Is there any um, shout outs that you want to give, whether it's your management, family, yeah, yeah. sponsors, anyone? I want to give a special shout out to, to Gwen Leggy, the option boxing management. If anybody needs to contact me for any business endorsement sponsorships, reach out to eruptionboxing.com. A special shout out to my sponsors, Mark Schwartz, Men's Shoes, one of the best. It keeps me fly. Mongoose Water. And, you know, to the fans, man, because it wasn't for your guys, you know, it wouldn't be macho time. So I'm yeah. thankful for you, I'm thankful for you, Lisa, for having me, you know, to, to, to stay my voice out there, you know, and talk and keep me, keep me in the light. I appreciate it, buddy. It's still macho time. It's still macho time. Um, one last thing, um, Sav Maddox said, Maddox said, congratulations on the grand baby. There, there is a lot of people on, you know, Facebook, you know, telling you congratulations, how much they're, you know, they, 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 they you know, they um, look up to you. You know, we had a few people that came on and, you know, wanted to say hi to Hector Camacho. It's macho time. So hey, you know, Facebook, I'm always on Facebook, man. Like, hey, you know, I have about 5,000 friends on Facebook. I know about 4,000 of yours. So, you know, right? <laughs> 
I'm always on there. So you can always reach me out there. But it's no macho time. Everybody keep pushing forward. Life's a fight. Stay positive. Positive thinking, positive being positive results, man. So stay focused and stay positive. We live in crazy times, man. Definitely. And love that. We in a time now we're gonna need each other. So love thy neighbors, man. Definitely love thy neighbors. Well, I appreciate you, Hector. Um, we got to do this again. Um, I love talking boxing. And when that time comes, when you're getting ready to fight on Chavez, I need you to come back on and, and announce that fight. <laughs> you have my number. Stay in contact. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.